Hello and welcome back to Vintage Gaming Memories. If you like what you see, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Every little bit of support helps me grow this channel, which I do appreciate. Now let's get right into this. So this will be my first walk and talk video instead of my previous ones, which were pretty much more stationary videos. What I want to do is give you a closer look at my Atari collection, which I do know that I have uh, that video on my channel that says what to expect from this channel. But that video shows everything I have that's vintage and there's no narrating on it. But you do get a good quick view of my vintage items such as the bar lights, uh, the pinball machines, the slot machine, and a... There you go that. And then a 100 year old uh, cash register. But... Um, you know, and there's also the various televisions I guess I have which are over here these are one of a kind first model televisions and some more up here and then of course the handheld games that are from the 70s and the 80s that I have been putting videos out and then last but not least all the Ataris whether they be the gaming consoles or the computers and its peripherals. This would be more specific to the Atari 8-bit computers and the gaming systems and those peripherals that go with them for North America, that were at least marketed in North America. Now, there is also a video of my workshop that has quite a bit of Ataris in there. If you haven't checked that video out, the link is right above here. Give that a little view. It's a short video, but you may find it interesting. Let's start here with the Atari 800XL. This is on a portable roller table, as you can see. This table was a great find. I found this on, I think it was on Wayfair. But anyways, it's awesome because I can use this table and roll this thing out. To either one of these chairs if I'm sitting on it and playing a game or even just programming or just keystroking something on one of my computers I don't have to keep getting up I can relax and have this thing right next to me I've got long uh, wiring behind it for the power as well as the video so that works perfectly and then this roller table has a couple shelves underneath as you can see here uh, on the shelves here I have mostly for display I have a Wicko Command Control trackball right here, awesome pickup, and then three other joysticks, two of them on the bottom level here are Wicko brands, one is a rare, um, what is that one, it's a, it's a rare fighter pilot stick, that's that one in front, and then the back one there is that, oh, what do you call it, it's the, um, the bat handle joystick. Couldn't think of that. And then on top, you can see back there, um, that's somewhat of a rare one. I guess they're all rare, right? I guess. But that back one there is a uh, Trigger Command joystick. I think that's a gee, Electra Concepts, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But it's from 1982, and I know that was more of a difficult find, at least in that condition. So. Those are not really my go-to joysticks. I would have to say the ones right here to the side of my cabinet are pretty one, pretty much the ones I use a lot. The 500XJ Epics and the small power stick ones right over there. I love those. I mean, they're great depending upon which game I play with. Let's see. Let's go right to the top of this cabinet. And we'll start here on the left. As you can see, I made this uh, shelving over here just so it can have more real estate to put more uh, systems on top of this cabinet. And these are systems that I play often and those that I modify, so that's why they're on top of this cabinet. I have duplicates of all these systems, and they're really on the other shelving for more display, which is over here. But getting back to this... Um, you can see the first one is an Atari 800XL. That's one of the four that I have. 
this one here has the FujiNet plugged in the back. Then on top, I have the two port 5200. And then I guess this is probably my favorite joystick. I have two of these. They're from Bratwurst from, from Atari Age. Bratwurst is his profile name. And he custom made these. They match really nice with my Atari 800 and the XL computers with the color scheme. And then the other one matches nicely with the other gaming consoles up on top here. And I guess I can't, can't neglect this one back here. This is a pretty recent purchase I had. This was a custom controller I bought from Hazen. I think it's Hazen 78. Anyways, he's on Atari Age, a profile that he has. He's located in Italy. I did write a review on this controller, which you can check out right above. It's a pretty good review. I think it's well worth it. It's nice. It's, um, you know, it, it works just as well as the Bratwurst ones, but just smaller. So that's why I do like that. Plus, it has the two button options on each side. So there's these are pretty much my three sticks that I would be using. Since we're on the topic of joysticks, comment below and let me know if you have a favorite joystick, whether it was a custom-built one or a store-bought one. I'm always open to trying new controllers or supporting those out there that are making them. So let me know. But getting back to what's on top of here, uh, I have some carts that I use. Some of them are just games, some classic games I put on there just to quickly plop it in there if I want to show someone. You know, the Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Pitfall. But then I got that nice one on top, the orange one. It's a 4-in-1 basic cartridge. You can see it has the basic XE, XL, Action, and the Mac 65. That's a really cool cartridge I purchased. I think I have another eBay one that was... Uh, could be customized as far as what you want on the cartridge. Then on this side, I have a couple more cartridges that would work with my 2600 as well. I have the side three, I got the plus cart, we all need that, right? And then I got the Harmony cartridge. So they all serve a purpose, depending upon what you're trying to load and play. Since we're on this side, let's look what we have here. Now on this shelf, I have the 7800, and then below it, I have the modified 2600 light sixer. Mods on the 2600 are minimal. I added a power LED light so you know when it's truly on from a distance. And I also did a refresh tune-up, which is basically new caps, uh, resistors, and I believe I did the voltage regulator on this one as well. But the power light is this thing here, just added on, which gives you a little green LED that you know that it's on from a distance. And then last but not least, the Atari 800. This is where, all, where it all began with me, at least when I first started using the Ataris back in 1980, I believe, when I got my first Atari 800. Well, let's take a quick glance of inside the cabinet, since we're here anyways. You can see I have quite a few items, but really the brains of the systems above for the audio and video is really this device here. It's the Medusa Retro Scan Doubler. I got that from Retro Lemon, and I got that for really the main purpose is it allows me to get the best image I can on my Samsung television. So what it does is it actually takes the input from the systems I have and it passes it through with the SCART and then it outputs it via HDMI to the TV so I don't really lose quality not much that you can notice at all it's really clean and clear the other side here has all the Atari 800 and 2600 games that are not in the box those box on the left are the Xbox games on top there to the top right that's one of my prized Atari devices that's the Atari video music system from 1977. I'll be making a video on it soon, but basically that device is an electronic music visualizer. That's what they call it. Uh, it, it what it does is really it just produces moving colorful images on a screen on your output that's in sync with anything you have inputted into it and as far as audio goes, you know, whether it be a record player or your um, CDs or just the radio itself. 
but what it does is gives a pretty cool looking retro psychedelic view of the sounds transferred to images on the screen. It's awesome when you put it with some Jimi Hendrix music and uh, I have a couple of videos on that. But anyways, it's a really rare and uh, cool find if you can get that, especially in working condition um, or even just in any condition for that matter. Let's see. Well, I also have on this side here some more uh, controllers. Those are the Atari CX40 joysticks and then the paddles with it. Don't you really use them often, but they're just there in case. And I guess what else is worth mentioning is on here, let's see if we can turn this carousel. I have a speaker, and that speaker is tied down to the back, which you're not going to be able to see back there. But anyways, let's see. Uh, there we go. Hard to tell what that is. But that is the, who I think it's called the Atari Vox. Yes, Atari Vox Speech Synthesizer. So depending on the game, whether it's on a 2600 or on a 7800, it, what it does, it, it gives you additional audio to the game. If it's programmed like that, it gives you maybe speech and sounds that you often hear when you're playing the arcade version. It was a purchase I made from Atari Age and well worth it. Oh, also on this carousel, I guess I should show you, since we have it here, are the box games I have that are unopened and sealed still. Quite a few of those. So now onto the back wall. This is what I refer to as my shrine or I guess my appreciation for the Ataris. Let's see if we get a good view. You can see it here. What it is is really all the Atari 8-bit computers and its peripherals as well, along with the Atari gaming consoles that you see over there on the right. These were everything that I could find currently made for North America's market. So I know there are many of them that you would find for Europe, but I was not collecting those. So this is strictly the North America market. I do have original boxes for a lot of these. They are all in working condition. I tested them all, cleaned them all, and that's why they're kind of on these shelves. But I figured, you know, why not let them breathe so there's no need to hide these guys and they're just out here wanting attention. So let's start with this side. Now, each of these tiered shelves I had to customize because they weren't made with this many levels. And I wanted to make sure I could fit all these systems nicely, but still have them viewable. And I also try to have this displayed in some form of progression, but it might jump around a bit as we go through this. So this is the Atari PC side. I have the Atari 400 right here. Then the Atari 800. Below that is the Atari 600XL with my Atari 800XL. Then beneath that is the nice large Atari 1200XL. And to the left of that is the Atari 410 program recorder with the Atari 1010 program recorder. So, as we go further down here, so this next shelving level is strictly disk drives and the first Atari external hard drive. So we have the 1050 drive right there. And then we have the uh, two of my three Indus GT drives, nice and shiny. And then we have an A10 drive. And then the box underneath the 1050 is the Atari SH204. That's Atari's first external hard drive, which is a 20 megabyte drive. And then the bottom shelf here, we have two of the XE lines. We have the 65 XE and the 130 XE. Now let's go to the middle section. 
This contains pretty much printers, modems, and miscellaneous peripherals. So we'll start with the left side here. This is the Atari 830 acoustic modem. It's Atari's first modem that came out in 1980, which is a 300 baud modem. And then next to it, it's not an Atari, but it's worth mentioning since it's a compatibility to the Ataris. This is the Hay Smart Modem 300. This came out in 1981, and it pretty much set the standards for modems. Then to the right of that, so then these two modems here are the ones I had when I ran my BBS in 1985. The bottom one is the Atari 1030 300 baud modem, and the top one is the Avitex 1200 HC modem, which is a 1200 baud modem, and the HC is Hayes compatible setting the standards right there let's see the next shelf below we've got the atari 835 so this is a direct connect 300 baud modem this was the second atari modem that came out right after the atari 830 and then next to that is the atari xm 301 that's a 300 baud modem as well that matched the XC line of Atari computers, as you can tell by the casing. And then the last modem I have here is the Atari SX212, which is a 1200 baud modem that came out in 1987. And then this device here, the Atari 850, it's not a modem, but instead it's an interface module that was necessary for some of these modems to connect with the Atari. It also served the purpose as being the middleman to connect devices that use the RS-232 port. So this is very much a key component for a lot of our systems earlier in the Atari age. Now below this shelf, there are two peripherals here that are used with the Atari 8-bit systems. This is the Atari Touch Tablet CX-77. It has that stylus you can see there. I have two of them. One is a brand new one, and the other one is the one that came with the tablet itself. Mostly this was used for some art programs. I didn't really use it much back in the day, but it was something that was nice to have and collect for today. Next to that is the Atari CX85, and that's the numeric keypad. And then we get to these printers. Right here we got a whole bunch of them so let's start with this one right here this is the atari 820 printer uh, it's a 40 column dot matrix printer and next to that one get a good look at this this is the atari 822 40 column thermo printer it's pretty rare it um, actually still works and you can see i did print something on there showing that it did work okay we will go down a level here this is the atari 825 80 column printer it's a dot matrix this was brand new never used never opened i bought it from best electronics the box and all the original packaging came with it and when i opened it it was like christmas 1982 with having everything sealed it's pretty amazing then the printer here to the right is the Atari XMM801 80 column dot matrix printer. And going to the next shelving is the Atari 1025. Let's see if you can see that. There we go. 1025 printer. That's an 80 column dot matrix uh, printer as well. And then to the right of that, this is the Atari 1020 40 column plotter that has four color pens. Then it's like, what is this? So this is where it kind of get out of sync. This is the Atari uh, FX551 disk drive. I didn't have any room on the other section, so it was bumped over here. This was a drive that came out for the XE series. 
And then at the bottom shelves we have we have this one. So nice looking. It is you can see the covering that's still on the X uh, XDM uh, 121 label there. This is the Atari XDM 121 80 column daisy wheel printer. This was also brand new. Let's see if you get a good view of that. It was never open. I got this also from Best Electronics uh, in the original box, all sealed up. And then the very last printer is the Atari 1027. It's also another 80 column laser quality printer. Now we'll get to the next section, which is all the gaming consoles. Starting here at the top. So we have the Atari Telegames Pong. You can see there, that came out in 1975. And in front of that is the Atari Video Pinball. That's the model C380. That was from 1977. And then in the back here, I've got a couple of these keyboard controllers. Those were the CX50, Atari CX50 controllers. And let's see here. Then there's a supercharger by, by Arcadia. That came out in 1982, which I did put a video out on it. You can click on the top right to get to that. Uh, let's see what else we have here. This is pretty cool here. So this thing is the GameLine Master Module. You're probably thinking, what is this? Well, this was actually tied to a service that allowed you to pay for games to be downloaded to your Atari 2600. So that was a pretty cool concept that didn't last too long. Anyways, um, let's see what else we got to look at. These other two items on the shelf here are really not vintage. They're pretty cool nonetheless. One of them is the collectible cards here. It's the home computer, 1974 to 1990. And it's really pretty much just a collectible series of cards that tributes the various home computers from that era. And in front of that, this is the Tiny Arcade Atari 2600, which has nine games you can actually play on it. And last but not least, the most important item on this shelf here is the 1977 Atari 2600 Heavy Sixer. Uh, look at that. It looks perfect. I love this one. Um, let's go down below here. Uh, let's see if we get a good view of the next level. So here we have the Atari 2600. This was known as the Darth Vader because of the black uh, casing. You can get a good view of that. And then this one here is a 1980 Atari 2600 for Switch. If I can focus that in, there you go. Pretty common. And this next level is pretty um, interesting. We got a lot going on here. You can see there is the 1986. Atari 2600 Junior. Both versions are being represented here. One with the short rainbow and one with the long rainbow. You can see that. That's the long rainbow. Then next to that we have the two Atari Lynx with the coverings on the, on the display for protection. And this is the first one here that came out in 1989. This was called the Lynx 1. That's the original. And then the one to the right of that is the Lynx 2, which came out in 1991. And then the one in the center here. So this is the Atari Portfolio Palm Top Computer. This came in, this came out in 1989. And you probably would have seen that perhaps in the cameo in the Terminator movie. I have a video that will be coming out on that soon. I have the whole setup of the actual props that was used for it. Well, below this is another level I had to create just to fit all this because there's quite a bit. <laughs> so this here is the four port Atari 5200. And 
Next to that is the Atari 5200 uh, trackball controller. It is in great condition. And we'll go down one more level here. This is the Atari Stunt Cycle Mono SC450. This came out in 1977. And there was a video also on that that I created that you can see. And then next to that is the Atari uh, 7800 Pro System. And below it, we wrap it up with the Atari XE GS, GS game system. And there's also the XE Light Pistol next to that. And then I have the Atari Jaguar. So that's my entire collection. But you know what? Comment below and let me know if you think I've missed anything on my uh, shelving here for collections that are tied to the Atari 8-bits and for North America market only. So um, no need to tell me about the European market because I know I do not have those, nor do I have the ST line because I'm strictly going 8-bit only. And, uh, and also let me know if there's anything specific you'd like me to make a video on that you saw in this video here because I will be doing a lot of videos more specific as I mentioned for like the Atari portfolio there there's gonna be one on that you know there's a lot of videos already out there on a lot of these systems so I don't want to be redundant and just repeat a lot of things but let me know if there's anything there that might interest you that's about it I think that's a wrap Thank you again for watching this video. I hope it brought some good memories from the past. So keep that gaming passion from the past alive by living it today, just like we did right now. Take care, everyone.